Happy Miku Day. I told you I'd get it done by the 9th. Now let's mosey, because I'm getting real sick of this Domino's music. But this is it. Project Diva X, the first Project Diva game on the PlayStation 4, and the last, shall we say, traditional Project Diva game, before it was all arcade all the time. Unlike F and F Second, you really don't see people talking too much about this one, so let's get right into it to see if we can figure out why. Starting off, we have a story to talk about. Yes, you heard that right. The world of Diva X is split into five clouds representing different auras, but they've since grown dim over time. Now it falls on the Krypton Folkaloids with the help of you, the player, to gather crystals to restore the cloud's glow and inject new life into the world of song. Okay, the story isn't a major focus, it's just really there to contextualize the rhythm game, but I think it's a nice addition. It doesn't take itself too seriously, each of the clouds has their own little stories that are some nice fan service, and between the main game and the side events, there's plenty of cutscenes to see. In fact, I might be so bold as to say Diva X has the most character of the Diva games. The presence of dialogue this time means that each of the Vocaloids have more defined personalities that you don't really get to see in the previous games. And I like how different costumes result in different mannerisms depending on the aura. It's a nice touch. On the gameplay front, it's Project Diva again. Hit notes, get combos, miss note, cry. Unfortunately, the star chains and the star dual notes from F second have been removed, so we're pretty much back to the gameplay of the first F game. That's not to say there hasn't been some changes though, particularly these new rush notes, which require you to button mash to get more points. Think the drum rolls from Tycho. So yeah, not too different, but the rhythm game you're familiar with is in the sub mode. The gameplay in the main mode is where things start getting spicy. You aren't graded in this mode, rather your goal is to reach a certain voltage threshold by the end of the song in order to clear it. Obviously hitting as many notes as possible is a good start, but that'll only carry you so far. As you make it through a song, the voltage percentage will rise, giving you more voltage per note, but there's a way to manipulate it more. The auras I mentioned aren't just there for story reasons. Each song is part of a particular cloud, and each cloud has an aura attached to it. Classic, cool, cute, quirky, and elegant. It yeah, kind of dropped the alliteration there. Costumes and accessories aren't just cosmetic anymore, they too have auras attached to them. And by equipping ones that match the song's aura, you'll gain an inherent voltage boost at the start of the song. To take it further, you can gain a better boost by matching accessories to certain themes, like animals and colors and that. And costumes have special buffs depending on the one you choose, meaning there's plenty to think about before going into a song. That's what I would like to say, but there's some problems with the system. To start, the costume buffs aren't really that useful, or rather it's more like the voltage requirements don't really demand them. Maybe some of the very late game extra ones require them, I haven't gotten that far myself, but as far as clearing the game, any costume will do just fine. The same low voltage requirement problem extends to the accessories as well, and picking them is almost just as mindless. The mix and match idea is cool, but the game doesn't give you any sort of hints or guide on what contributes to a theme, so you're more likely to just cycle through everything you have until you land on something. And since some combinations are inherently better than others, once you find one that gets you the most voltage, there's really no reason to switch it up. That is, of course, if you have the needed accessories in the first place. A Diva X does away with the shop, and there's no Diva points either. After the voltage gauge fills up, you clear the song, and filling it in excess gives you rewards at the end of the song, which range from the accessories to gifts for the returning diva room. Costumes, however, are a different story entirely. To get these, you need to fill up the chance time meter, same as before. Instead of causing a stage gimmick, this time it causes a magical girl style transformation which grants you the costume. Here's the problem. Uh, for one, you have to actually succeed in chance time, so if you don't fill the gauge, or god forbid, miss the final note, you forfeit your chance at a new costume for that song. Secondly, in songs with more than one singer, only the lead can get a new costume. So if you're someone who doesn't like switching the lead singer, well, that's tough. Pour one out for my man Kaito especially, poor guy doesn't even get a solo this time around. And then, yes there is more, the costume you get is randomized. This isn't a problem early on, but the game doesn't have any preventative measures against repeats, so as your collection increases, you're more likely to go longer without getting any new costumes. Not to mention, some costumes are tied to certain clouds, and some costumes are inherently more rare than others. There are costume effects that can stack the odds in your favor, but at the end of the day it all comes down to chance, and it makes getting all the costumes an absolute chore. 
Also, and this is a personal thing, but I think the mix and match approach makes the game look all over the place. That's not me saying Diva X looks bad, absolutely not. The game uses the PS4 to make the game look sharper than ever, and it also hits that coveted 60 frames a second I've been hyping up all this time, making it the best looking and best playing Project Diva game so far. It's more like all this accessory changing means that the game doesn't have much in the way of a visual identity. Not helping either is the game's switch to a style more focused on choreography. I had this big whole thing ready for this, but it's all opinion so I'll refrain. But I don't think it has as much of a visual identity as the music video approach of the older games, and I don't think it leans enough into the dance choreography stuff the way the Persona dancing games do leaving Diva X in this weird in-between where it doesn't really satisfy either camp. That's just me though. Also, and again, personal thing, but I'm not really feeling this song list. It's in a weird period where I was aware of Vocaloid, but not really into it, so I don't have any nostalgia for many of them. Not helping is the absence of custom charts. The concert editor is back and it's been streamlined, which I don't hate, but you can't edit the actual choreography, and you can't make new charts, which means no custom songs this time around, which probably killed a lot of this game's value. That's not to say that there aren't songs that I like. I was familiar with Love Trial prior to playing this game, but it's here where I fell in love with it. Brain Revolution Girl is one of my all-time favorites, and this is where I was introduced to it. Mikito P makes himself known with Even a Kunoichi Needs Love, another one that I really like. Humor Stream of Miss Pumpkin is one that always goes in the Halloween playlist, and while it's not my favorite Neru song, I know Lost One's Weeping is a fan favorite. I also like the medleys, which combine multiple songs either with a focus on the aura or a focus on a particular artist. The beginning medley, which focuses on a bunch of songs from Oster Project, the cute medley on Michi M, and the quirky medley on Keika P are my favorites in this regard, and I'd love to see them come back. Oh, oh, so you can put 1-2 Fan Club in a diva game. You just don't want to. Okay, I see how it is. Hang on, Gigantic OTN. Isn't that the one song where Len sings about his... Oh my god, it totally is. Rated T for lyrics. Yeah, you got that one, right? There is plenty of content in Diva X. Clearing the game will take the normal amount of time, but each song has a different number of requests with different voltage requirements and different stipulations, like playing the song on a certain difficulty or having different challenge items on. There's also event requests, which are more the same but have added stipulations based on the event in question, such as playing a song of your choice from a certain cloud or using a certain vocaloid. In that sense, it is a more rewarding way to play Project Diva. But in the grand scheme of things, Diva X just feels kinda... unfocused? It feels like there's a bit too much fat in the main game, and it's too thin in all the other aspects, making the game on a whole just kinda... okay. It has character, and there's some good ideas. Let's bring back the cutscenes in the story mode, and refine the voltage aspect, and we have something going there. But even still, I think the gameplay style of X should come back as a side mode to the more traditional style of D.Va rather than serving as a replacement. As it stands, X is fine, but I don't think it's that controversial to say that it's the weakest of the D.Va games. Well, that was a nice meaty script that I just read. Uh, just prior to recording this, I managed to get my hands on a PlayStation 5, so let's use Future Tone as a sort of stress test. Also, so that I don't have to talk about Miku again for a bit. I alluded to it before, but Future Tone adopts the arcade style of gameplay. This means holds are optional for a high score, slide notes are present, and multi-notes requiring two different button presses are upsettingly frequent. I love this game, but I'm gonna be real with you, I prefer the older D.Va games playstyle. It mainly comes down to the difficulty. I'm not exactly a Kosei here, but I'd like to believe I'm pretty good at Project D.Va. You wouldn't get that from looking at most of my footage, look you try playing D.Va with audio T-Sync and then we'll talk, but the gap between Extreme and F-Second and Future Tone is really big. I get it, higher difficulty means more plays, which means more money for Sega, but it's a bit much for me. It's those dual notes, man, my fingers just don't know where to go, and even if I hit the right combination, mashing them back to back is another story. If you held a gun to my head and asked me to beat Disappearance of Atsune Miku on Extreme, I'd tell you to just shoot me now. There's no diva room, there's no concert mode, none of that, but Future Tone excels in the sheer number of songs on display. 
for a little less than $60, you get over 200 songs, which blows the size of the previous game's song lists out of the water. The size wasn't really a problem before, because the games had more going on than just the rhythm game, but I'm glad they made up for it with all this. There's a number of returning songs from FNF Second, a lot of songs from the PSP games, and even songs from Project Mirai. Nothing from Diva X though, even after DLC. Huh. I still want to return to a more traditional Project Diva game akin to F Second, but for now at least, Arcade Diva's keeping us pretty well fed. But that's gonna be it for now. This isn't the end of me talking about Miku, there's still plenty of games to talk about and obviously as time goes forward, more games are coming out. But I need a nice long break from Atsune Miku, cause this and the F Second video have lived rent free in my head for months now. It was fun replaying the Diva games though, and it leaves me excited for what the future can hold for Miku and the Project Diva series. So happy Miku day, and I'll catch you all next time.